Hello, everyone. Hello. Welcome back to my channel. Welcome to part three of this workplace behavior. I just wanted to do like, I thought I might do five. <laughs> I'm feeling ambitious. <laughs> I'm feeling ambitious. <laughs> feeling ambitious. Um, part three on this uh, workplace behavior, etiquette and mannerisms in the workplace. And we're going into the holidays. So this is really what's spurring that on. We're going into the holidays. Everybody's stress goes up and people, some people take time off from work and they try and decompress. Um, and there's holiday, holiday functions. And then you have other things and there's just different kind of stress going on. So it's just kind of preempting that is what I'm saying. So before I get started, I want to recognize I got my pink in my hair in honor of Cancer Awareness the month of October. So uh, please uh, do whatever you can to help recognize cancer, cancer research, and let's just kind of kill cancer if we can. Right? So I wanted to make sure I say that. If you didn't get a chance to see my other two posts, please uh, take a look at those, uh, the short videos that I talked about the first one was about etiquette and mannerisms and the, um, you know, being the person that would be considerate and respectful, not inconsiderate or disrespectful in the workplace. And the second one kind of focused on the supervisors. If you have reported that to a manager and their lack of doing, doing nothing about something, and if that's complicit or even if that's per, by personality, that's the most difficult thing to change in a workplace, particularly if someone that has a position of authority, I'd say it that way. They have people that report to them and they, their personality is a disturbance to their work teams or their work units. It's very sometimes very difficult uh, to, 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 to mm, I wouldn't say correct, uh, and I wouldn't even say coach, uh, corral, <laughs> to corral that individual. It can be done, but it's not always easy, I'll put it that way. So those are the first two videos. I encourage you to go and take a look at those if you haven't yet. And this one, I'd like to discuss the hostility, workplace hostility. And let me let me preface by saying this. Um, particularly in California, if you are a supervisor, you take harassment training every two years and um, up on higher, and then some employers have their employees take it once a year. And it, nowadays, the people are just so, oh my goodness, everyone, please calm down, calm down. I'm sending you my energy, calm down. Um, that it's almost done more frequently, I'll put it that way. But what I often find is that people don't understand, or people don't, I shouldn't say understand. So, People don't seem to recognize or don't seem to sound a board up on a possible hostile work environment. They, so here's my words, my direct words. I'm, I think I'm being more careful right now. I don't know why I'm doing that, but. The reality is people tend to suffer at work because they don't say anything. So they suffer in silence and you can hear it in their reporting if you can dig it out of them, which is what I often do. I don't, I I learned a long, so I learned a long time ago, just hearing a, a report at its preface is pointless. The person really hasn't said to you what they want to say to you in the way they want to say, because the fear is still there. You have to carve through the fear to get through it. And um, I'm a do something about something person. I'm a do something about, I'm an action. I'm a verb. <laughs> so I take action. That's <laughs> I take action. So I'm saying all of that to say this. A lot of times people don't report a hostile work environment or work environment that made them so uncomfortable because they haven't learned how to approach it is what I'm saying. Now, having said all that, I want to add to that is many times they have a difficulty even recognizing it as a hostile because we have been trained to think of the word hostile as really like a war zone and this is horrible and it's a takeover and it's violent and it's terrorizing and oh my God, I can't, it's that. That's not what hostile is. It is that. And it's 
heightened form, I'll say, hostility in its heightened form. But a hostile work environment is a person that is could be done by a person or persons who use poor gestures, who use gestures and motives and interactions that try to encourage or build fear and intimidation in a person. And they never said a word. It's bullyism is a hostile work environment. Sending mean texts and emails creates a hostile work environment. Um, having clicks in groups where the others aren't invited in and then doing whatever you can to distort the work cell is creating a hostile work environment. There are various different ways that you can create, participate, partake in, be involved with, be around, be suspect to a hostile work environment. And it has nothing to do with hostility and that type of feverish way that we recognize the word hostility. Sexist jokes can create a hostile work environment. So having said that, that's what I want to talk about. That's what I want to talk about. When a person has a, let's say, outburst, let's say, because there's been more of that. We talk a lot about mental health right now. And respectfully, again, I've said it many times, whatever the mental health support a person needs, my God, I hope they get it. I hope. Myself included, whatever. You calm yourself down. But I mean a troubled mental health. I, My God, I hope they get it. However, if and until and while you do, you cannot bring it in the workplace. I'm sorry, that sounds, even the workplace is being careful with it. But at the end of the day, you cannot bring the disturbance into the workplace. Because that's what creates the hostile work environment. Now, I love you if you have a sickness or an illness or a mental health or a high level of stress that makes you have an outburst. I beg and plead that you get the help you need, whatever gets you healed. But you cannot bring it to the workplace. You cannot make others feel uncomfortable by your discomfort on a regular basis. So seek the help, but you can't put it on the workplace. Now I mean that lovingly and gently and with grace because individuals who find themselves subject to that particularly if the person is in a position of authority and they're pounding and banging and yelling and screaming, that's a hostile work environment. Now, we all have bad days. I have days I'm like, oh my God, guys, I'm going home. Y'all fix it tomorrow. That's, that's me. But that's me unto me. I'm having a bad day. Okay, I'll fix it tomorrow. You guys do whatever you want. I'm going home. I'll do it like that. I know when it's time for me, but it's never towards a person. When you have an outburst, a banging of the desk, a throwing papers around, a reprimand with a tone, a tone can be considered hostility. I suggest you go and re re take a refresher course on it. 
is what I'm saying. I'm encouraging it because during the holiday season, it heightens. Now, I'm talking about what I know. If you're not in this role, you don't even see it. Let me tell you something about this. Let me, let me give you a little bit behind the scenes. If the HR team is really good, you never know a crisis is happening. They make work nice. It's not propaganda, though. We don't, uh -uh, uh -uh, we don't do propaganda. But you don't know about it. You don't know there's an issue. You don't know how many conversations have been had. You don't know if they had to go to bat be in your behalf or somebody else's behalf or speak up for a whole team. You don't know. And that's the art of understanding the position in a certain level of the position. That's the art of persuasion. That's the art of defense. That's the art of negotiation. That's the art of determination. So a lot of times when people, when I hear people say how it's not, I say to myself, oh, you just don't know. Because you've never been in those conversations. A person, not maybe not you directly, but I would say most people have not been in those conversations to understand what else has already been done to prevent such an environment. So when a person brings such an environment, the first thing the forces do is to go back to push it back and go, or no, because the goal is to keep a calm work environment, keep a calm flowing even if you work in a fast-paced environment, the environ, E-N-V-I-R-O-N, the environ should be calm, should be collected, should be copacetic. So yelling and screaming and pounding and beating and what I call speaking a, rep speaking a reprimandish tone. If you don't give me that report. No, 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 no. Tone is very important. Now you go back and go back. Here's what here's here's what I'll have you do. Go back and rewind this very tape. Tape. Oh, I'm so I aged myself. <laughs> rewind this video. Did I say tape? Rewind this video. And you will see even how I work. When I needed to make the point, the entire tone changed. The glance changed. The pauses got longer. The reason I'm saying that is to say this. It took me a long time to figure out what was best for me. And particularly in situations where it's someone that's even higher than myself and go, I got to correct that person. And I found that the best thing to do in many situations is to show what we ultimately want in a company as a culture and how what they were doing was preventing that from happening. And right there. That changed it. So work within things and do not allow a vindictive, reprimandish, harsh tone or yelling and screaming and pounding. All of that creates hostility, sending bad emails, all of that. Don't allow it. Say gently. You don't want to have your work to feel that way, that you feel that way. Okay. So, and again, we'll be gentle with everyone's. After COVID, everybody had a little bit of cray cray, you know, meaning I'm not knocking mental health, a, a, a person that's truly struggling with issues. I'm talking about we were all ready to get out of the house.
else. And so all of us had a little bit of fatigue, mental fatigue. But now we're acclimating coming back. And we have to set a standard of conduct. And the standard of conduct that works at all times is respect. The, the standard of conduct that works at all times is courtesy. The communication that works at all times is considerate. So do those things. Practice what we preach. And I love you. If you've gotten this far, please click like. Then click subscribe and I'll see if I'll do another post. I'm kind of on this thing where I really want us to practice better behavior. If not now, then when, child? Have a good day. I'll see you next time. Click like. Bye.